There is a legend far away in Japan, which has never been here before, United States market. But now we're here in 2023, and we do have this beautiful car, which is Toyota Crown. So as the owner of this beautiful car, XLE Edition, and I'll tell you why it's an XLE Edition for me, because I am the actual owner of the car. I'm not going to tell you about those things, which you can Google it and check it right away. I'm going to tell you about daily driven car, which I'm using it every day with me and my family, my kids. And why do I buy this car under my name? Because it's not only cheap car, it's not a MSRP car. You can, in my 2023, you cannot just buy the car for MSRP, especially Toyota Crown. And the reason why, there is a huge shortage of something. I don't know exactly what, because there is always changing rules and this and that. There is always a reason why it's a shortage, but it is a shortage and you have to wait about half a year, maybe a little bit more to get this beautiful car. I got it and I don't know why, but just because it's something new. Again, as a used car dealer, I'm doing a lot of different things with a lot of different cars from the cheapest one to the most expensive one. But this car got my attention on the pictures in 2022 and I decided I want to get one as soon as it's going to be available. And I'm not that kind of guy which is going to spend over a MSRP sticker just to buy it, just to have it. Not yet, maybe later on, but not right now. So I got the chance to get this car for exactly MSRP. But before I got it, I was going around and shopping. I was asking the dealers if they can sell it to me, if they do have in stock. And whatever they do have in stock, they're not selling it for MSRP. They're selling it over. And the over depends where you're living and how much you're making. First of all, they have to check your credit score and after this and after that. And they're going to decide if you're going to pay 3000 over MSRP or you're going to pay 8000 over MSRP. And that's the reality of May 2023. But if you do have a good friend somewhere else, maybe you're going to get it for MSRP. That's the Los Angeles 2023. We are in May and that's what's going on in the market. So as the owner of this beautiful car, I do know they do have a three different edition. There is an XLE, there is a Limited, and they do have a Platinum, which is, has a totally different engine. But besides that, I want to show you the headlights. The headlights, they are different on the different level of the cars, whatever you're going to buy. But if you're going to take a look, there is no parking sensors on this car. It does have a lot of different features, but especially the parking sensors, for some reason, they do illuminate it. I don't know why, because the $50,000 probably not worth it. So it is what it is. The grill on this car, it looks so beautiful, it looks so nice, but I do understand when I'm going to drive it somewhere in the desert, not far away in the desert, but if I want to go to Coachella or I want to go to the Vegas, I want to spend some extra money to play and to get some fun. This grill is not going to help me. It's just going to overheat the engine. Maybe not right now, maybe not tomorrow, but eventually it would. The suspension of this car is kind of high. It looks like maybe Lexus RX and it looks like you're going to fit all the family inside the car and you're going to drive it with a durable period of time. The wheels on this car, it's 19, and they are high. The tires on this car is kind of high, same as the suspension, which is going to give you a lot of comfortable drive when you're driving in the city. On the freeway, not really, because it drives like old Camry or maybe like old Avalon 1996. The way it looks, it's so beautiful. I do enjoy the way it looks. The way it sits, I just enjoy it. I love it so much, especially when the guy who I bought it from, he just takes me a picture. Hey, your new car just arrived. Do you want to go pick it up or you want to do us delivery? I said, please, if you can do delivery, do it for me because I was a little bit busy at work. So they did delivery for me and I signed all paperwork, whatever I have to do. And I just was stunned because this car looks so nice, so beautiful. It's much better than the picture. You just amazed until you're going to open the door. When you open the door, you're going to see all the plastic, which is here, and it's all moving. So you got the car for 50000 and you got this, you got that, you got this beeping, you got this engine. The sound of the engine, it's nice, it's Toyota engine, until you push the gas on it. So when you step on the gas, you're going to hear a lot of different noise coming from the engine. And you're thinking your engine, it just falling apart. Because maybe there is something wrong, maybe there is a factory defect on it. No, it's not. It's just Toyota. And it's just a new engine 2.5, which is designed for this car. It's not designed for this car. It's a Camry engine, which they're using on this car. And they're also using on the Sienna. All-wheel drive, which is, has three electric different motors. Because there's one in the middle and one on each axle of the car. So here, we can see the engine of this car. It's a nice, beautiful 2.5 Toyota Camry. A little bit design, a little bit date, something. I don't want to do details because it's too much time. But what I do notice on this car, when I open the hood, because again, I'm a used car dealer, so I do see a lot of different things on other cars because I'm, I'm the one who's doing the maintenance on the car, who's keeping the car clean, so the people can buy it. That's the oil they're using on this car. That's the Zero W8. Have you ever seen Zero W8 oil? Me neither, I never saw it before. So probably it's so thick like a water. 
And when I call the dealer, I ask them, you know, I got a brand new, beautiful, nice crown, which I do love it so much. And they say, congratulations. I mean, this is, this is super rare car, especially right now. We're waiting couple for the customers, but we don't have one currently in stock. I say, okay, I want to get, I, I got one already. So just give me some advice. When I step on the gas in this car, my engine sounds so bad. It's like going to fall apart. Should they come and you're going to do something about it? You're going to change the oil. You're going to, you're going to switch it to a different engine, whatever. It's a Toyota. It's normal. You know, something breaking. You're going to the dealer, they're switching you up, they're giving you nice Prius, you know, for loaner. And you're coming back after half a year, you're going to receive your brand new $50,000 car back. And you're happy again for next, some period of time. But they say, no, you know what? You have to give this car 5,000 miles at least. So the engine going to break in. I'm like, what supposed to break what in? Like, it's already looks like broken, you know, it's already making something. And they're like, no, 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 you have to drive 5,000 miles. You have to come to us. We're going to do oil change for you. We're going to do some part of the maintenance. We're going to do software update. And probably your engine going to work better. I'm, and I asked them, what do you mean probably? Because they said there is, new, there is no new software for this car and they barely knew so the people can drive it and they can see what the problem is. When you're going to come to us, we're going to see what's the problem. We're going to tell to the factory. The factory is going to tell us what to do. So you and Mike going to take up to several quite time until you're going to get the car fixed. If you're not going to get your car fixed, you're going to come back again and do it again. So next point, I was thinking about this car so high and so much room inside so I can fit my family and all my needs. So because I do have a kids and as you can see, I do have a two car seats because the third kid, he has a different kind of seats and this car cannot fit him. So my wife driving my other kids. So now we're going to go to trunk compartment because I do need it. First time when I came to the car, I had a key in my pocket and when I was going to open it. So I start pushing the everybody doing it probably, but not me. So I, I check it out here and I say, okay, there is a button here. It's probably maybe comfortable. Maybe, I mean, maybe enjoy, but I do understand if it's going to be rain or it's going to be dirt, you're going to drive through the snow. All this stuff is going to be covered with dirt or it's going to be covered with snow. You're not going to see the button. You have to open it from the inside or from your key. But again, if you want to open it, because all this is going to be covered with mud or it's going to be covered with snow and you want to open the trunk because you do have a bags from your Whole Foods or from your Rals and you want to put it in the trunk, you're not going to be able. There is no sensor here, right? Okay, the car is on, the car is running and your wife and kids sitting inside because it's cold outside. So you're trying to open it, you cannot open it. You come in here. So, and even if you're going to ask your wife, which is sitting right there on the other side, to open the trunk by pushing the button on the driver's side, and she is going to listen to the music, probably the loud one, because the kids sit inside and they want to play. She is going to hear me. You know why? I'll tell you later on. So now we come into the trunk again. You have those bags. You want to open the trunk and uh, the push the button. It's kind of difficult for you because it's all covered with mud or dirt. You have a key. So you put in your bag. You can push the button. The car is running. I'm pushing the button to hold it and open the trunk. But for some reason, it's not opening. So I'm going to go back here open the door and push it because I don't want to back my wife, right? So she's okay. She's listening to music. I'm doing my stuff daily one because it's a daily driven car, right? So I'm opening the trunk and I do have a lot of different things in the trunk already because again, that's my car, which I'm driving every day. So I do have some parts because I'm a used car dealer. So I need to drop something because I have to replace something on another car. That's okay. That's my daily car. It's not something somebody gave it to me from the dealership and I'm going to review it. I'm going to show it to you and I'm going to give it back to them. No, that's my car I'm using every day. So what I have here, I do have a Hyundai, which is a first aid kit. You know why? Because this Toyota doesn't have it. I do have this one, which is the air compressor from the Tesla. You know why? In case the tire is going to go low, I have to pump it. I'm not going to go tire shop right away if I'm at night in the middle of nowhere. I have to pump the air and drive it again. So they don't have one. And I do have a nice jack, which I can lift my car and put the spare tire, which is Finally, suddenly, this car, do you have it? And it's, it's right there. So, but this, this set is from the Mini Cooper. You know why it's from Mini Cooper? Because it's such a nice, it's, it's really easy to use it. It's just nice. I just want to keep it here because I don't want to use something useless if I can use something useful. That's why. So now I got a problem. I can't put those bags inside the car because on the back, I do have a space for my kids. Only two because I do have a three kids, but I cannot put the third one just because of the space. And they do have different stuff inside, you know, they're drinking some juice, they're playing some toys, they do have uh, cars here. Even right here, I do have a school bus, which is nice, but it's extra. So my wife sitting on the front and she has some bags, which is in front of her legs. You know why? Because she cannot put it everywhere. And it's a nice, beautiful bag. There is a Gucci, there is a Louis Vuitton, and it's sitting there. 
Now, now I have to put those grocery bags in my trunk. I have no space and I got the car for 50,000. So now I'm doing this. I'm putting this back here. I'm going to put this one. Now probably I might gonna, ah, nice. I do have a carpet from a launcher. You know why? Just because it's there. So I'm trying to put the bags here, right? So now I'm trying to close it. Thanks God, this bag is empty. There is nothing inside, but if it would be something in, so those hinges would push in to this bag. And if I do have my camera inside, it's gonna crack right away. So where should I put it? In the middle, beautiful. Do I have a space more? No, I do not. That's it. That's all for the trunk. There is nothing else you have to know. Now we're gonna drive it a little bit and I'm gonna show you beautiful car inside, which, which I was thinking supposed to be the interior, which is Toyota made for 50,000 because they brought the legend back. I don't know where back, but in Japan it's still producing and it's been producing all the time since 50 years ago. I got XLA edition, now I'm gonna tell you why. Because number one, I asked for not leather seats and they told me you can buy only cloth seats if it's XLA edition, not limited, and it's cheaper. I'm like, beautiful, let's do that. And I was thinking it's gonna be those seats which is on the crown, if you know the crown. If you don't know the crown, just check the, just Google it and see what kind of seats they have. And you're gonna see what kind of material. So that material, you're gonna touch it, you're gonna feel it like it's a luxury. Luxury, super nice, super soft car, even if you're gonna buy that crown from 91. But I got what I got. I got those cloth seats. And I really love it. It's not the leather. I don't want a leather. I don't want to tint the car. It's a family car. It's a nice one. But it's not that material which is supposed to be on the crown. It's a, that material what's supposed to be on the Prius. But it's on the crown. I'm fine with that. That's Toyota. There is nothing wrong with that. It's just a Toyota. A nice looking car which is probably almost about a Lexus. But it's still Toyota crown. Now we're going to drive a little bit inside the car. And I'm going to show you what's my daily drivable needs. This car not going to fit. And it's probably never gonna fit, even if they're gonna do a new update on the car, if they're gonna invite, like, design some new software which you're gonna install it on the car, it never gonna fit my needs, which is this car supposed to be going to the auction or somewhere else, I'm not gonna keep it. This car not gonna be in my family anymore, and that's the reason why. So, is my daily driven car. I do have some quiet miles on it. It has 658 miles on the car. So I want to put my sunglasses somewhere and I decided to put it in the cup holder. You know why? Because there is no other spots in the car you can put your sunglasses in. I do have that bubble gum, which I'm using it, but I'm putting it here. Where? On the charger spot. Why? Because I do have a wires which is connected to the phone, which is charging my battery. I'm trying to do the charging for this phone. I'm just putting it in and it shows right here. And I'm waiting till it's going to charge. Is it going to charge? Uh, I'm waiting. I'm trying to move it a little bit. Maybe it's not close enough. Uh, but for some reason it's not charging, so it's just not charging. So I'm, I'm again, I'm putting back to my wire, and I do have my old style wire. I do have a new phone, but I do have my old style wire, which is right here, and I'm trying to put it as a, uh, other many different things I do have, but it only has one USB port, which is right here. Okay, it does have USB-C port, which is one, two, three, and I do have two more on the, on the back, so it's a five of them, right? Nice. So. All devices I do have, I want to connect it to charge them a little bit because my battery dying. I have to buy new cables. That's why I can charge it here. I put in my bubble gums right here. So, which is the right spot. My sunglasses in my cup holder, which is beautiful too. So, I'm putting on drive, which you can see it everywhere, how that works. So, I do have a drive. I do have a battery, which is going down the hill for set charge battery, for fast charge battery, which is something I, I still don't understand. Even, even though I do have that, and I did, did say that on a previous 2006, 2010, whatever. So, there is a three different type of modes you can drive on. So there is an Echo mode, there is a normal and there is a Sport which is, makes no difference on this car. We're just gonna drive it on Echo or just let's do normal. But again, I don't understand why on this beautiful cluster for Toyota which has never been before I do have not my XLE or, or, or Limited. It has a Platinum Edition because of the rims. Rims on the Platinum Edition is totally different. Now we're gonna see what's going on here. Uh, here is going on my MPG, which is supposed to be 42, 45 or 43, whatever, but it's always 10, 36. Not because I'm driving super crazy or fast, just because it's like that. So this car does have different different features, which is like line assistance if you're driving drunk. This one, is, it has a Distronic Plus, which is Mercedes made it public, like I think, in. 2006 maybe 2007 ah no it was an s class back in 2004 so now i do have a source button which is the car connected to the blue link which you can call the 911 or whatever your needs but again the emergency button 
has emergency cover. So in case there is something wrong and you got an accident and you saw bad condition, you have to open this cover to push the button. So there is a safety for the safety button. That's super nice. Now we're going to see this, which is same as the Toyota 2006 Corolla or any Corolla you want to see. Headliner is super nice too. I do love it a lot. The climate control, it's super hot outside. I do have it on 68. Even if I'll put in a sport mode, which is supposed to be improve my climate control, but it's not improving. So I'm doing the climate control a little bit lower so I can enjoy my AC a little bit more. Uh, but it's not doing that. So I have to do it manually in case there is really hot outside and hot inside and I want to get some fresh, nice air. So now the car is fully heated up. I already warm it up and now I'm going to drive it. We're going to put it in drive. We're going to do it Eco mode, sport, whatever, any mode you want. And now we're going to hear the engine. Also, you're going to know why my wife going to hear me with the loud music in if I'm going to ask her to open the trunk by pushing the button on the left side. And that's the reason why. Can you hear the engine? Yes, you do. And that's the point why I told you I called the dealer before and asked about it. it the cluster itself has a super nice... The cluster itself has a super nice... So the cluster itself has a lot of different new features, which is same as in, as in the Tesla. First of all, it shows me speed, where I'm supposed to drive it here. It shows me 35. It's super nice. Sometimes it shows me the stop signs and it shows me where I can do U-turn. If you do have a friend who sit on the back seat, you move your car seat, your child seat, now your friend sitting there. So you're driving somewhere, right? You want to... You want to go drive it, you're going to drop him me somewhere because he asked you, you know, you're going the same way. Okay, whatever, we're going to go. So now on the cluster, it shows me nobody needs to put the seat belt on because it's all good, right? So you're driving it and driving it and now your friend is going out, right? So we stop right here, right? Your friend, your friend just jump out and you're like okay have a good day brother i'll see you later and you can sit inside because you're enjoying the you know it's hot outside and you sit inside there's a climate control going on we're waiting the red light to turn off and we're gonna drive right so we're gonna drive so you you keep going you know you're going your way you have to go somewhere and people waiting for you and it start beeping like what's happened why it's beeping i mean i do have a seat belt and the friend who's sitting next to me he has a seat belt also. <gasps> What's happened? That's the friend who just left and he unbuckled. But he left. Why it's still beeping it? Why it's still doing it? So what I have to do, there is a two ways to eliminate that noise. First of all, you have to stop. You have to put your car on the parking. You have to turn it off, right? And you have to turn it around back on because there is a safety or you have to pull it on the side, right? So you put it on the side. Oh, that's super nice didn't start so now it's stuck okay or the second way to eliminate that noise you have to click the buckle back so you have to turn around go back to the seat and click the buckle for my guy who just left who say bye to me that's super nice so is it the car cool when you're driving in van nice it's beautiful because the road condition in the city it could be better this is the way how it goes right that's the same i can tell about this crown it could be much better for the money you're paying for the car I'm not going to tell you this car is so ugly or it's uncomfortable or it's not suitable for you. It is a beautiful car. It is super nice. I love it so much. You cannot even imagine how much I love it because it's all wheel drive. It is a hybrid, even if giving me 36 MPG, not 42, 43, how it's supposed to be. But I don't know why. So probably that's the, the way I'm driving it. But sorry, that's my daily driving. What I supposed to do? There is no software available and something like that. So now we're going to see what's going on in the car. I'm driving it and it's quite comfortable. But again, I want to see if this car, the seat going to go down. It's going to go lower because I'm a little bit high. So my legs here, it's not comfortable because in the middle, I do have a central console, which is going to my leg. You know, I, I cannot pull my... I can do the seat back, but again, on the back is going to be no space for the legs if somebody going with me. If there is a kid sitting, yes, I do, but I got a big car, which is super huge outside if you're going to take a look again. But for some reason, I'm not comfortable because of that. What kind of noise is that? I have a crown for 50,000. That's okay. That's normal. It's a Toyota. 
I do have an application for this car, same as the Tesla does. And I can show it to you what is that. It's a little bit slow, maybe not a little bit, but it's slow. So, and it's always keep telling me the problem with my back seat. So I have to, I have to check the seat and what's going on inside. I mean, my seats back one are locked and it still shows the truck unlock, the door unlock, open. When I turn the car off, it keeps sending me the message, check your rest, check the rest, back seat. I mean, what should I check it? They still there. I mean, I'm still driving and uh, I do have them on the car, but for some reason it's, it just sending me the message. So there is something going on with navigation here. I think maybe because it's limited edition or something else. So I mean limited, not because it's super nice, limited because it's just limited for me because I have to pay. So I'm trying to go to the destination because again, I don't have a type C USB SSTP, whatever cable, and I can charge my phone here. So basically my battery on the phone died and I need to go somewhere. I need to go home to charge my phone. So I'm trying to use navigation. 52-53 Sunset Boulevard, California. I found 52-53 Sunset Boulevard. Would you like to go now? Oh, that's super nice. I never did it before. That's cool. Yeah, I want to go somewhere else. I want to go take me to the restaurant. I'm so sorry. It's not the you Tesla. Can say yes or go now to start no, the don't go anywhere. But it's not working all the time. Sometimes you might gonna get confused. Oh, she gonna get confused. Oh, he, whatever it is. As a navigation, my pronunciation maybe not so good, so it's not understanding me. Sometimes it does, sometimes it's not, whatever. I'm trying to type it, right? So I wanna type my destination. Okay, I'm trying to go other way, long way, like the regular way, and uh, there's nothing going on here. I'm like, okay, let's go here. Navigation, probably it's somewhere here. There's nothing here. There's no search here. I can call destination insist, go navigation settings, even if you're not using it, you're using your iPhone. But again, I say the iPhone is dead. The battery is not working. You need to use navigation. You do have it, but you not remember how to use the map and how to go by that. You have, oh, see, it shows entering school zone. That's super nice. Now I keep trying to find out what is the, where's the shortage? I can put it on. I can tell again, but it's not going to understand me. So it just keep going on and on and on and on and on. And you just like, oh, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm going to ask that guy, uh, where is my home? You know, where is that address? And as you can see, we're driving on the street and we're not driving in Beverly Hills where the people see all the fog. Well, and we're not driving in the Beverly Hills where all the people can see all the different type of cars. They're not impressed anymore. You know, whatever Ferrari it is or, but I can see the guy who's selling the fruit on the street or girl, old lady, and nobody, nobody trying to see what kind of car I'm driving. Even if sitting in traffic, nobody impressed by that. So you bought a car for 50,000, you wait about six months to get this car and you got it. For my needs, I do have a lot of space on the back, but it's for my kids, you know, they, they playing over there, not me. I'm not sitting there, they playing. They have to put toys. If they're gonna drink something, I'm gonna put my white t-shirt on the seat. They, they're just gonna put some juice on it, you know? So I have to wash my brand new t-shirt, right? And I already have some napkins, which is in my door packet. So my door packet is full. So I'm opening here. This is beautiful thing, which has happened like on the Mercedes and back in 2005. But everybody's so impressed about this car because, oh, wow, that's a new crown. No guys, I mean, just check the old cars. They, it's already there. So you can open it from the driver's side. You can open it from the passenger side. But the problem is it's already full. I have a lot of different stuff there. And I just cannot put my brand new white t-shirt in this compartment. Okay, we're closing it. Should I put it under my legs? No, I love it. It's my brand new. I want to keep it. So I'm opening the glo glove compartment, glove box, right? To put it there. And I do have some manuals. I do have a, like a... Uh, Oh, window stickers, the brakes are so terrible on this car. And uh, it's all here, right? So if I'm going to put it back, since manual is supposed to be in the car, you have to drive it, right? And sometimes you can't understand what's going on. You want to open the manuals. So I'm going to leave it there because they, they should be there. So this is maybe something I can trash it. I want to put my t-shirt. Okay, let me put it somehow here, there, okay, right here. And yeah, that's a beautiful spot. So that's the, whatever you can put it on the top. I wouldn't say I love it. I already like it. You know, that's, that's something really a nice word. I don't hate it. I do like it, but I don't love it anymore. You know, and those 600 miles in the car for me, that's the top. That's the top, what I can make. And I don't want to drive it anymore just because this car not only not impressed me anymore, this car cannot fit my needs. 
but my needs is so small. I need here, I need there, I need just a little bit more space, I need a little bit more comfort, I need a little bit better engine sound because this one, the sound proven in this car is just horrible. As soon as I step on the gas, the noise of this car, it's like tremendous. It's like I'm driving the McLaren on a high speed on a freeway, I'm enjoying the weather, I'm enjoying the, the wind, you know, my windows open, my music playing, and I step on the gas, McLaren, it just flies. I'm not flying, guys. I'm driving on the street, my speed is 35, and I have that sound from the engine. Is it impressing me? No, it's disappointing. Do I like this car? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea anymore. But like only 10 minutes ago, I loved that car so much. And I loved it so much more when I was so impressed. I'm going to get this car. I'm going to one of the people in Los Angeles who's going to get brand new crown. Nobody else does. So, and for some reason, I was driving the car all around the streets here, and uh, we're not in Rodeo Drive, we're not in Beverly Hills, as you can see, we just, whatever the car came to. And uh, I was going to ask you myself, do I like this car right now? Not really. Would you buy, would I buy the car like that? I already bought it, and I have to live with that. And it's just the way the car can bring you in. I mean, you can... You can love it, you can enjoy it, but I mean, nobody impressed this car and nobody cares. Even those people who's working here, they keep working. I mean, nobody even check. I mean, they check, somebody came, but no, nobody check what kind of car is that. It's just a new crown and it's here in the United States and you have to love it the way it is. But again, there is another part of the car which I can test it, which I can show it to you. Because again, I'm from Russia. You know, in Russia, we drive in Volga, Lada, Zhiguli. It's totally a different car. And if you go by quality of this car, because I know what kind of quality we have over there, the one is producing, the quality, it's just absent, you know? Outside on the street, it, it's making a lot of noise. The doors itself, the soundproofing of the car, the mirrors. I mean, if I'm going to close the door, the mirror is going to jump. If I'm going to put the, open the door and I'm going to sit inside and move it by my leg, it just keep moving. So the plastic in this car is so horrible. I mean, do you want to... Do you want to check what's going on inside the door? Yeah, it's easy. It's like that. I mean, it's the, that's it. I mean, it's open. And uh, the seats here, all the buttons here, it's like from, I mean, like 95, 96. I took it out. I mean, I'm going to put it back. It's a Toyota. It's easy to fix it, you know? So probably it's like back in, back in the days in Russia, <laughs> when you buy the car, you have no parts, you have nothing. And you, you drive in the car in the middle of nowhere, the car got broken, so what are you going to do? You're not going to cry, you're not going to go and call AAA and 911 because you don't have a reception, you don't have a phone, you have nothing. So you're just going to go deep in the wood, get some parts, come back, you know, put it here, your shock went off, you whatever, you take a piece of wood, you put it inside, you keep driving in. I mean, your tire got flat, you just driving with no tire. I mean, that's the reality of life. And that's the car of reality. That's a new crown in 2023 in the United States. Everybody want it, but not, in, not me anymore. And I'm going to say bye to this car as soon as I can. Not right now, not tomorrow, but as soon as I can. Because I'm not enjoying to drive it. It's my daily driving used to be. And we're just here in this beautiful area next to something where I have no idea where it came from. But it's here. Same as the crown. I mean, it came from nowhere. Nobody knew. This car gonna come, nobody knew it before, but it's here and you have to take it the way it is. And the question of the day I wanna ask, would you eat burger or fries?